Welcome to this circle where we come together to be just where we are, wherever we find ourselves, and we gather to lean into the strength of who we are together. We come here to create courage and comfort for one another. For some, our hearts are broken open by the losses of those we love, the loss of health, the loss of identity or relationship. For others, we grieve the state of our planet, the social and economic pain born of poverty and inequity. We lament the terror of war and the struggles born of abuses of power. And we come here with each other to share honestly the spectrum of emotions we feel in this season in this safe and honest circle we create with each other. Our hearts may be as occupied with grief or fear as the ancient town of Bethlehem was occupied in the world of the ancient story and is occupied today. We may be occupied by our memories or occupied by loneliness or anxiety or our worries for the state of the world. We may be occupied by a sadness whose source we can't even really name. Whatever our thoughts on this night, whatever this year, this day has held for you, you are welcome in this circle. There is a safe place and there is room for all of us and for each of us. We come here to light a candle rather than curse the darkness, to share warmth beyond the misery of cold. We kindle a flame of hope that we might find a spark of strength in our stories, in our songs, in ritual, in this community that we share with each other. We come here in the warmth of community, in the wisdom of song and story, in the stillness of this night, and in the tenacity of one small flame, which we know can give light to our darkness. We come together as a community journeying through this season of Christmas expectations. And we gather to share compassion and seek wisdom in this emotion-filled season. And so we acknowledge together through our words the many facets of this season. And so I invite you to join in the bold uh, text that follows my words. In the glitter of tinsel and the hum of merriment, we meet our memories and face our realities. In the winter's short light and long darkness, 
you know, into the shadows of loss that threaten to overwhelm us. In the snow-blanketed fields and the icy breath of cold, we find warmth in our care for each other and our dreams of longer. In the boughs of green shrouded with snow, we look for signs of new life in the depths of winter. In the stories of this Christmas season, we open our spirits to the courage of living. Let's join together our voices as we join our intentions with one another. Let's pray these words together. We come as weary travelers, seeking wisdom in the stars and shelter in this circle we create together. We come as curious shepherds, not knowing what we will find in this season. We come as the of love and light. May it be so. From one of the stories that gives us this Christmas season, in those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered this was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Now in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were terrified. And yet the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising and saying glory to God in the highest, and on peace, and on earth, peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to this Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary, she treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. This is one of the ancient birth stories that our tradition passes down to us from the first century. May we find wisdom for our living.
Every year we come to this season and we contemplate this story that we hear again and again. If we're lucky, we hear something new in each Christmas season. This year, perhaps when we hear this story, we might think of the vulnerability of what is being described to us when we hear this ancient text. A young pregnant girl, already vulnerable in her culture to attack and shame, unwed and her fiancé insisting he's not the father, and contemplating leaving her, exposing her. This young woman and her perhaps changed of heart new husband now traveling away from anything she knows. Her family, her support, her home, completely in the unknown, and in the ninth month of pregnancy, and on the road. And in the midst of this time, with just her and him, labor begins, and they find no place to be. Alone together, outside, in a new and different town. Living in a world that's far from ideal. But is their reality all the same? A region occupied by foreign forces. I'm sure passing by on the road at numerous times. Roman soldiers with swords. That army enforcing an absurd population uprooting in the guise of a census. And they experienced closed doors, having to labor in a strange place. They birthed their child, a child who, as any baby, must rely completely on a parent to offer every protection imaginable. Meanwhile, I'm sure the parents are thinking to themselves, where is our protection? The story we read is full of vulnerability. And even characters that are on the fringes of this story are some of the most vulnerable. Even the supporting cast of this story, the shepherds, the marginal night workers paid to guard the sheep, Those at the fringes of first century rural life, they remind us that the surroundings, the context of this whole story is poverty, is subsistence, is difficulty and challenge, where it's a struggle every day. These shepherds remind us that they're not like, uh, they're not unlike most of the, of the town of Bethlehem, I'm sure. Working each and every day for them and their families. There are no weekends. There are no vacation days. There is no parental leave. There is no break from the hard work of making it through another day. And it's on these grounds reading the story with these eyes, that we can meet these characters in the world of the story. In the most difficult challenges that face us, we can perhaps relate and understand the relentlessness of thoughts of worry 
the unceasing challenges that seem to come. We can understand the never-ending thoughts and waves of grief or of self-doubt. Or wondering, when will this work end? When will it be easy? Our own journeys through the world place us, like these characters, in vulnerable places. Life is soft. Life is vulnerable. Our walking takes us through valleys of shadows of death. Our walking takes us through gauntlets of illness and treatments. Our journeys take us through losses of one kind or another, losses of relationships, losses of good health, of beloved partners and parents and children and friends. Our walking takes us through losses of meaning and purpose as well at different times. Through losses of work and resources and time. This is life. This is the softness and vulnerability. And this is what places us exactly in solidarity with the Christmas story in such ways that we could be the fragile ones. That we could be the ones alone and journeying, waiting, searching, vulnerable to the elements, vulnerable to the world, and seeking shelter, any shelter, in our long night. Not one of us has ventured our lifetime without at least journeying through one of those experiences that has us feeling vulnerable. I'm greatly humbled to have experienced through the stories and experiences of a, of a good friend in South America, the Latin American tradition of Las Posadas. My friend tells me that in, in the last evenings before Christmas, many towns and villages throughout Mexico and South America continue to celebrate Las Posadas, the Feast of the Inns. On the nine evenings before Christmas, Mary and Joseph travel each night from house to house, seeking a place to stay on their journey to Bethlehem. In some communities, a couple plays the part of Mary and Joseph. In other places, statues of Mary and Joseph are carried from house to house. And those accompanying them carry lanterns in procession. They sing songs about Mary and Joseph looking for shelter. One of those verses goes like this. Pray, give us lodging in the name of heaven, all day since morning to travel were given. Mary, my wife, is expecting a child. She must have shelter tonight. Let us in, let us in. And when they come to a house, the family residing there proudly makes reparation for the old refusal told in the ancient story. They open their doors and they say, come into our humble home and welcome. And the host family opens their doors and welcomes all who accompany Mary and Joseph to the feast that the house has prepared. And this happens every night for nine nights as Christmas approaches.
It seems that like the young couple in our Christmas story, hope must shine in the smallest of places. In the story I just read, it's, it's half a verse. No, it's less than that. It's five words. The verse is this. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And laid him in a manger. Five words is the only hint that they found somewhere to be. Anywhere to be. They found a manger. They found shelter. The the greatest gifts arise in the smallest hints and the smallest hopes. Shelter is found in those who receive us. Whatever that looks like. And it's perhaps in the embrace of family, in compassion we find. But just as often it comes in the form of a welcome from strangers. Or one, we didn't consider a close friend until that great need in our lives arose. And it wasn't from those we expected, from, but from one we didn't. that in our great need shows themselves to be more present than we ever gave them credit for. Well, regardless of who it is, in difficulty and challenge, it's quite easy to see all the closed doors. It's quite easy to focus on the words, there was no room in the inn. and very easy to pass over quite quickly those words laid in a manger. Those words that offer that sliver of light from a door that's been opened just a crack. Shelter is that way. Maybe not where we expect it, and maybe difficult to find in our deepest need. But finding shelter that takes a sharper focus to see, the shelter provided by hmm, a fellow journeyer on the road, like those sitting to our left and to our right in front of us and behind us tonight. Even in the midst of challenge ourselves, we ask ourselves, is there a way for us to be the sliver of light, the needed shelter for another, even if we ourselves are in need of it? We come to Blue Christmas for many reasons, but I think think many of us come because we're in need Maybe we're vulnerable. Maybe we need shelter. I think it's our very vulnerability that will make us uniquely qualified to offer shelter to each other. It's out of our vulnerability that we are able to offer shelter because we know just what that might look like. We know what that sliver of light through the crack in a door looks like and where it might be needed. I'm gladdened and I'm inspired again by the song that those Mexican pilgrims sing as they finally come upon the house that will host them. The last verse of that traditional Las Posadas song goes like this. Enter, enter, holy pilgrims. Welcome to my humble home. Though tis little I can offer, 
All I have, please call your own. It's in that spirit, not just of welcome, but of shelter, that we light this candle. It indeed may not seem like we have much to give. And perhaps we're seeking for ourselves and feel that in our vulnerability we're in a season of receiving. And indeed, we may have little to offer. But for those of us who journey together, it may be just what another needs. May it be in us to seek and to find, to treasure and value our vulnerability. For it's in that sliver of an open door that we find great light and perhaps just the shelter that we need. This is a story that comes to us from Victoria Safford, who is a Unitarian Universalist minister. This is a story Marg Hetherington read to us a number of years ago. We haven't heard it in this circle since 2009, and we hear it once again. It's called In Between. One afternoon some time ago, I brought my little baby out to visit a very, very old neighbor. My neighbor was dying that year, quietly and gracefully, in her gracious home. We were having a birthday party for her, with sherry and cake and a few old friends gathered around her bed. To free a hand to cut the cake, I put my baby down right on the bed, right up on the pillow, and there was a sudden hush in the room, for we were all caught off guard beholding. It was a startling sight. There in the late afternoon light were two people side by side, two human merely beings. Neither one could talk, neither one could speak, not in a language we could understand. Both utterly dependent on the rest of us, bustling around, masquerading as immortals. There they were, a plump one, apple-cheeked, a cherry tomato of a babe, smiling, and a silver-thin one, hollow-eyed, translucent, shining, smiling. We revelers were hushed because we clearly saw that we were dancers on the very edge of things. These two were closer to the threshold, the edge of the great mystery. They were closer than any of us had been for a long time or might be for a while. Living, breathing, smiling, there they were, each with one foot and who knows how much consciousness firmly planted on the other side, whatever that is. Whatever that is, that starry darkness from which we come and whither we go in time. Fresh fresh from birth, nigh unto death, bright-eyed, they were bookends there, mirrors of each other, radiant. Cake in hand and napkins, knife, glasses, a crystal craft, a century old, we paused there on the threshold of our momentary lives. Then someone said, what shall we sing? They said it to the silence, to the sunlight on the covers, to the stars. It was the only question then as now, years later. What on earth shall we sing? This is the experience of a community of friends. Mm -hmm. 
Indeed, what on earth shall we sing? We're inundated in this season in music that ranges from it's a holly jolly Christmas, the best time of the year, to I'll be home for Christmas, if only in my dreams. From jingle bells to in the bleak midwinter, from joy to the world to it's a blue Christmas without you. The range of music mirrors the range of emotions that make their home in us, especially during this time of the year. The moods of this season are so many. The stories, the songs, the traditions that create this season for us shift from that bleak scene of silhouetted parents in twilight in search of shelter to another frame with an intimate, stable scene warmed with strangers celebrating the birth of a child. It shifts from a cold night with shepherds shivering on a hillside to unexpected, breathtaking sense of presence that brings with it an inexplicable sense of well-being. We live between the dreams of peace and the realities of growing unrest in the world. We live between moments of sheer joy and moments of unbearable sorrow. Between the nostalgia for the past and the hints of hope about the future. Between the deep loneliness of feeling isolated even in a crowded mall to being overwhelmed by the small kindnesses and gifts of a stranger. We're on the threshold of letting go of a calendar year and making fresh tracks into a new one. We're on the threshold of the sun returning from its southern journey, soon to be shortening our nights and beginning to lengthen our days. And like the family in the nativity story, we too are between leaving home and returning home. We're on the threshold between Christmases past and Christmases to come. On the threshold that receives its light from two different directions, from behind us and from before us. We reside in the gift of the long or short dash between our birth and our death precariously perched on the limb of this fragile and fleeting present moment. We've all had moments like the one Victoria Safford described. We've all had moments like that moment she saw in the infant and the elder. Moments of knowing that we are always on the edge of mystery, on the cusp of the unknown and unknowable making what sense we can of the past and finding courage to step into the mystery that we call the future. That we live in that provisional place we call the present tense, which is really our only true home. The threshold of a door frame is where we're told to take shelter in the event of an earthquake. It's also the place of refuge in our life quakes. Between those stages and shifts of life, there's sanctuary in the threshold, in that place where we are betwixt and between. The story we sing and celebrate in this season confronts us with our fragility, the fragility we see so clearly in the elderly and in the newly born. The fragility we see so clearly in the beginning of life and in its end. The fragility we know so well on our Goldilocks planet being in just the right place in the universe to come alive for our little threshold time. For some of us, our threshold is wide with years. For others of us, a very narrow passage, a very short step in time. And in this old story we tell year after year, amid all its vulnerability, 
every year we're invited again to be seized by the mystery that meets us on the threshold and invites us to live with wonder and curiosity. In this ancient story, we're invited again to be dancers on the edge of things, to stand again in the threshold of the stable, seeing ourselves like the newborn and the elderly neighbor, remembering again that each birth comes wrapped in mystery and each death comes swaddled in mystery. In the moods of the season, in the shelter of the circle we meet, in the threshold of our momentary lives, to sing our joy and our pain, to be alive to the mystery of being here in all its trouble and beauty, to sing the blues and the beauty of our experience, to stand in this eternity between our birth and our death in reverence for the mystery of being those vulnerable dancers on the edge of things. In all that makes this season difficult for us, our fragility holds the possibility that we might be more open, more porous, more easily penetrated by the radiance that seeks us in our tears and in our laughter, in our fear and in our wonder, in our curiosity and in our compassion. So we light this candle in gratitude for the mystery that meets us. The mystery that gives us life and death. The great mystery in which we move and have our being. The mystery from which we come and to which we return. The great fire that birthed the universe the same great fire that burns in the stars and gives us our radiance. We light this candle for mystery, for the mystery and miracle of being, in which our pain may deepen into wisdom, and our grief may meet its twin in gratitude, and our love may paint our losses with mystery and meaning that we may live with a vulnerability that is open to the great mystery of spirit. It's now that we're invited to take time, to take whatever time we need, not just to reflect, but to engage in this time of ritual in community, this time where uh, we can take the uh, taper candles uh, with us to the front, and light it from any of these candles on our center table. We each had the opportunity to choose an ornament uh, at, the, at the table as we entered the room. And as we ponder and hold that uh, ornament in our hands through this time, uh, we ponder that which we wrote on that ornament uh, those, those things, those people that weigh, that sit in our hearts on this night and through this season. And you're invited to take that ornament with you, to hang it on your tree or to have it uh, with you at any time as you need it this season. And if you'd prefer not to have that ornament with you or keep it, then you're welcome to hang it on our blue Christmas tree. May this be a time of quiet, of reflection, a time that is spacious for us to use as we are community side by side with one another in whatever ways we need it tonight.
holding our light, we bring our prayers to this night. We come in search of serenity. In the shelter of this darkness, we dare to speak honestly about the state of our planet. Amid all that we've endangered, may we find the courage and conviction to turn our hearts and our hands to heal our air and soil and water. In the shelter of this darkness, we dare to speak honestly about the people and places of the world where hunger, violence, oppression, disease, or disaster has broken land, broken communities, broken families, broken hearts. May we find ways to mend our warring madness, to share our power and resources, to see our common humanity and our shared destiny, to extinguish cruelty and ignite our compassion. In the shelter of this darkness, we remember those who are most vulnerable, those who are sick, those who are dying, those who are waiting for help, those who are hoping for healing. We remember those whose memories are scarred by tragedy, by abuse, by accidents, by the fate-filled turning of time. We remember this night those who are desperate, those who are hungry and homeless, those who are without hope. As we hold this light in our hands, we hold these beloved ones in the embrace of our love. In the shelter of this darkness, we acknowledge our grief over what might have been and our grief over what was and cannot be any longer. We lament that we have survived and others we've loved have died. We lament that relationships we hoped would last a lifetime have lasted a season. We laugh and cry our way into the realities we face. And in the safety of this circle, we name in silence those whose light we hold in our hands and we hold in our hearts. Knowing hard things break and soft things bend, May we befriend our vulnerability in ways that keeps our heart pliable with wonder and with gratitude. In the shelter of this darkness, may we find the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. May we find the patience for the things that take time, the appreciation for all that we have, and understanding for those with different struggles. May we find the freedom to live beyond the limitations of our past. May we find the ability to feel loved and to love each other and find the strength to get up and try again even when it feels hopeless. With the wisdom of our stories and our lived experience, may we offer each other strength for today, courage for tomorrow, peace for all that is, for all that was, for all that will yet be. We pray as those born of light, and ever seeking it. Amen. It is night, night that comes after a full day, a day where what has been done has been done, and what has not been done has not been done. And so we let it be in this moment and bring night's forgiving to our living. The night is dark, 
dark enough to emphasize our fears of the world and of our tomorrows. And so we rest in this circle of light and bring its gentle glow to our living. And the night is quiet. Quiet enough to believe in peace. And so we wrap ourselves in this quiet and bring night's peace into our living. May the light of shelter and mystery take us safely into this good night and fill our hearts always with courage and with comfort. May it be. May we go into this night's peace.